we're going to use G-Power to calculate the minimum sample size needed to run a paired t-test. Remember, a paired t-test, there's only one group, but two measurements, like, like a pre-test and a post-test. Was there a significant change between the pre-test and the post-test? That kind of thing. So, um, heads up, paired t-test doesn't need that many people. But let's pull up the G-Power. Again, we're going to go to the t-test family. We go to which statistical test in the t-test section here. And we were looking for difference between dependent means. Dependent is a paired t-test. Got it? So we're going to click on that. Same thing applies. One tail, two tail. So let's, let's in our example here, let's pretend we give a pre-test and then we give them some therapy and then we give them a post-test and we're, we're measuring their depression scores. Hopefully the therapy worked and their post-test depression would go down. That would make this a one-tail test, okay? And again, we leave the effect size at the medium of 0.05 and the, the critical error is 0.05. We leave that alone. I'm sorry, critical alpha 0.05. And then we always change the power to 0.8. And we calculate, and there it is right there. So you only need a minimum sample size of 27 people to run a paired t-test that would generate a power of 0.8 and hopefully give you an excess of, uh, an effect size of 0.5. Again, there's nothing you could do about the effect size. It, it has to be in the data or not. That's part of the test, okay? But it does give you a, the power will be there for you. Okay, MGZ, out.